In this video, we're going to look at the mean value theorem. So what the mean value theorem tells us is that if we have a function, which we have given here, that is continuous on some closed interval that we're given, but it's also differentiable on that same open interval, so what that means is differentiable on the interior of the closed interval, basically. What that means is there, there exists at least one point, we call it some c, that belongs to, it's a mathematical symbol for is an element of or belongs to, so we're saying this point C belongs to this open interval right here, such that we get F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So what that means for us, kind of in general terms, is that there is some value C inside of this interval here such that if we were to evaluate the derivative of our given function at that c value, the value that we would get would be the same value as this expression that we have on the right side here, which looks very familiar because it's also the rise over run, slope. So what we're wanting to find is where is the instantaneous So, in order to do that, let's take the first step in the process by evaluating f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If we were to take f of b and f of a, what would that look like for us? Well, what we normally talk about in terms of notation for mathematics, when we're given an interval, the lower number, or the least number, the lower element, however else you want to call it, like in this case the, late, the least number, negative 3, is going to be our a, and the larger number, 4, is going to be our b. So here we're going to have f of 4 and f of negative 3. So then if we plug those into our y here, we call this y or f of x, because what is y but a function of x? What we're going to get, if we plug in 4, we would evaluate all this. We would get 4 times 4 cubed minus 17 times 4 minus 17. And this would evaluate to give us 171. And then if we do the same thing for negative 3, 4 times negative 3 cubed minus 17 times negative 3 minus 17, and this works out to be negative 74. So now for our case of this question, let's go ahead and plug in f of b, f of a, b and a inside of our form that we have here, and let's see what we need to look for in terms of the derivative point that makes this statement true. So what we're going to do is we're going to say f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the same thing as saying in this case 171 minus negative 74 over and then we have 4 minus negative 3. Whenever we subtract a negative we get a positive, right? So we have 171 plus 74 and 4 plus 3. Well our denominator becomes 7, that's kind of plain and easy to see but 171 plus 74 gives us 245. And if we reduce this to make it easier on ourselves, 245 divided by 7 gives us 35. So essentially, what we're looking for in our case here is we're looking for the C value that returns us, if we were to plug it into our derivative, we want it to return a value of 35. This is what we're looking for so far. But we've talked about the derivative kind of in passing, Let's go ahead and take the derivative of our original function. So our original function is f of x equals 4x cubed minus 17x minus 17. And if we take the derivative of this, all we really need to do is use the power rule, right? So here, we're going to use the power rule on each term individually, and then we'll get our derivative. So here, 4x cubed becomes 12x squared minus the derivative of 17x, which is 17 and the derivative of negative 17 evaluates to 0, so this is our derivative, okay? But now what we're looking for is we want to try to figure out a way to relate these two statements, right? Well, since we're looking for a value that makes our derivative equal to 35, and x is rep representing some arbitrary value, let's just rewrite f prime of x as f prime of c. So we would get 12 times c squared minus 17. And so now that we have this, we have f prime of c, what we want is we want this to equal 35, right? So now what we're going to look for is the c value that gives us 12 times that c value squared minus 17 to evaluate to 35. So let's go ahead and do just that. Let's just solve for c right here. 
So if we add 17 to both sides, we're going to get 12c squared equals 35 plus 17 evaluates to give us 52. If we divide both sides by 12, we can reduce the right side here. We get c squared equals 13 over 3, because 4 goes into both of those numbers. And then, taking the square root of both sides, we get that c is either plus or minus the square root of 13 over 3. So what we found right here is a value that makes this statement true. But remember, inside of the mean value theorem, we need to find a c value, at least one of them, because the theorem guarantees that there is at least one of them. There can be multiple. But we are looking for c values that belong inside of the interval negative 3 to 4. So keeping that in mind, we're going to ask ourselves, does c that we found belong in negative 3 to 4? And well, let's look at this value that we got for c. What is 13 over 3? But if we were to write this as a decimal or a mixed number, what we would see is this is 4 and a third, right? But if we were just dealing with plus or minus 4 and a third, it wouldn't be inside of our interval at all, right? But that's not the case of what we're dealing with. We're dealing with plus or minus the square root of 4.3 because we rewrote 13 over 3 as 4 and a third, right? So instead of 13 over 3 being outside of a radical, it's being, in, it's being evaluated inside of a radical as the radic hand. But we know that taking the square root of 4 would give us 2, right? And the only thing that would cause this square root to be outside of our realm of possibilities would be if we had to take the square root of something, say, larger than 16, or in the case for a negative number, is 9, right? Because the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 9 can give you positive or negative 3, similar to how the square root of 16 give you positive or minus 4, right? So in this case, we're dealing with the square root of 4.3, so this will be a little larger than 2, or a little less than negative 2, right? But in either case, since this is a little larger than positive 2 or a little less than negative 2, if we evaluate this, we see that plus or minus root 13 over 3 both fit inside of our open interval that we were concerned with. So both c equals positive root 13 over 3 and c equals negative root 13 over 3 will satisfy the mean value theorem for our function on our given interval. So again, when looking at the mean value theorem, the statement that you're really looking to satisfy is this one right here. We're looking for a value when plugged into our derivative gives us the same value as rise over run when the rise over run that we're looking at or our slope, the change in y, change in x, the many different ways that we can call it is being associated with the endpoints of our interval. So we're looking for that c value that makes this statement true here when we plug it inside of our derivative. But we need to make sure that not only does this c value make this statement true, but the c value also lives inside of the open interval given to us by our a and b for the question that we are asked.